Hello everybody, welcome to this presentation entitled Solving Difference Equations. In this video we will see the introduction, how to solve difference equations, we will show an example and then we will talk about natural and forced responses to conclude this presentation. Here we have two relevant videos related to this topic, Power Electronics number 67 and Power Electronics number 68 about system discretization. So if you want to have more information about these topics, please take a look at these videos. Before starting with difference equations, let's remember first what is a differential equation. Here we have the equation. We are assuming that we have constant coefficients. So we have the coefficient a sub m times the nth derivative of the variable y in time and the rest of derivatives. And then equal to another function x of t, which we can call the excitation. We know that in order to be able to solve the differential equation, we need several initial conditions as shown here, and that the solution of the differential equation is given by the addition of two solutions. One is this one here, y sub h of t, which is what we call the homogeneous solution, also known as natural response. And the other solution is y sub p, which is a particular solution of the differential equation. So in the case of the difference equations, it's very similar. We have here a difference equation with constant coefficients. So we have, for example, this term is a sub n, the coefficient, times the k minus n sample of the variable y, and so on, and equal to the excitation, which is given by another coefficient, b sub n, times the k minus n sample of the excitation, and so on. So again, here to solve this difference equation, we need some initial conditions as shown here. And the solution is going to be given by the addition of the homogeneous solution or natural response plus the particular solution of the difference equation. Let's remember here how to solve a um, differential equation, for example, in this case, the response of this RC circuit supplied with a DC voltage and with an initial voltage at the capacitor equal to V sub zero. So this is the differential equation that we have. This is the initial condition. So we have to solve the homogeneous equation, which is the differential equation equal to zero, removing the excitation. We know that the homogeneous solution is a constant times the exponential function of the root of the homogeneous solution times the time. So the characteristic equation is as shown here. We obtain the roots of this equation. In this case, is only this one. So the homogeneous solution is as shown here. Now we need a particular solution. Because in this case, the excitation is a constant, we can assume that a particular solution is going to be also a constant B. So we substitute this constant, this particular solution, in our equation, and this is going to be equal to zero because it's the derivative in time of a constant. So we have B here equal to V sub I, and then we get that in order that this particular solution is a real solution of our differential equation, the constant b has to be equal to v sub i. So with this we have the complete solution, which is the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. And then we have this expression here. Now on this expression we apply the initial condition. So in order to have the final solution, our equation here, our final solution, has to satisfy the initial solution. 
So the voltage at the time instant equal to zero has to be V sub zero. So we have this condition and finally we obtain the value of the constant A as shown here. So we only have to substitute here and then we have the complete final solution of our differential equation. In the case of difference equations, it's very similar. We start with the homogeneous equation, which is the difference equation by removing the citation. From this equation, we obtain the characteristic equation. As shown here, we can multiply by c to the n exponent in order to obtain the equivalent polynomial. So we have this polynomial here and from it we can factorize and obtain this way of expressing the polynomial as a function of the different roots. Once we know the roots, then we can obtain the homogeneous solution as shown here. is a constant times the first root to the k exponent plus another constant, the second root to the k exponent, and so on. So we can express this solution in a more compact way, as shown here. Also, we are assuming here that all the roots are different. Today we are going to see just this type of solution. We are not going to see what is the solution when we have multiple roots. So this is the final expression. So these are the constant c sub 1, c sub 2 and c sub n are the constant that we have to determine using the initial conditions. And the functions g sub i to the k exponent are called the system modes. In order to have the final solution of our difference equation, we need a particular solution of the complete equation also. Similarly, as we have seen in the case of the differential equation. So in this table, we are showing particular solutions that can be used depending on the excitation. If the excitation is a constant, then we can use a constant as a particular solution. If the excitation is an exponential function of the index k, then we can also choose an exponential function of the index k, as shown here. If the excitation is a sinusoidal or cosinusoidal function of the index k, then we can choose a combination of sinusoidal function and cosinusoidal function. And finally, if the excitation has this form here, which is the index k rise to a constant exponent, then we can choose a particular solution as shown here. And all these constants a, b, a sub n, a sub n minus 1, and so on, are to be calculated by substitution in the difference equation, similarly as we have seen for the case of the differential equation. Now we are going to see an example of solving a difference equation. We are going to use the difference equation of a digital low-pass filter. In this previous video, Power Electronics number 67, we do the analysis and the discretization of this low-pass filter. And then we obtained this discrete difference equation that describes the digital low-pass filter. So now we are going to solve this difference equation to obtain the solution corresponding to the discrete output voltage of the digital filter. So we are considering an excitation as shown here is a discrete constant input voltage with the value V sub i. So this is the difference equation that we have obtained in this previous video and the initial condition is equal to V sub zero. So then we write here the homogeneous equation by removing the excitation. So we remove this part here considering the excitation equal to zero. So then we get this characteristic equation. This is the polynomial and we have only one root and this is the value of the root. So the homogeneous solution is as shown here. It's a constant times the root rise to the k exponent 
So we have this expression here. And now, because the excitation is a um, constant, we can consider as a particular solution also a constant value, A. So we substitute this value in the complete difference equation to see if this is a suitable solution for our difference equation. So we obtain this after substituting. And then we get that if A is equal to V sub I, then A is a particular solution of our equation. So now we can say that the complete solution is the homogeneous solution, the particular solution. And this is the final expression that we have for the complete solution. We only have to obtain the value of the constant C sub 1. So here we have again the complete solution with the constant C sub 1. So we apply the initial condition to it and then we get that this constant is equal to V sub 0 minus V sub i. So we substitute this in the expression and we get the final solution as shown here. So note that we call this the solution because we can obtain any sample directly by substitution. We can obtain the different samples from the difference equation also, but we need to do it sample by sample. Here with this solution, we can calculate any sample directly from this expression. And here we have a comparison of the continuous solution that we have seen for the RS circuit with a constant excitation. This is the response in blue. And the dots in red are the values of the discrete variable of the output voltage. And they can be obtained with the solution that we have just calculated. So, of course, we have an exact matching because at the end, this expression here is just calculating the same values as shown here in the continuous expression but using the instant k times the sampling period for each of the samples. Now let's take a look at the solution that we obtained in the case of the analog circuit, in the case of the filter. This is the solution and we can write this solution as an addition of two expressions. One is this one here that depends on the initial condition that we have for the capacitor and the other one is this expression here, which depends on the excitation that we are applying to the circuit. So this part of the solution can be seen as the natural response of our circuit, because it's the response due to the initial condition of the voltage of the capacitor. And this can be called the forced solution, because it's the solution due to the external action to the excitation on the circuit. These two solutions can be also obtained by applying the superposition principle. The natural response corresponds to this situation in which we are not applying the input voltage to the circuit. So we have only the initial condition as the voltage across the capacitor. So we have this differential equation with this initial condition. This is the homogeneous differential equation. And then we have this solution, which is the natural response of the circuit. And then we can consider only the fourth response, which is the response of our circuit, considering the input voltage, but no initial condition in the capacitor. So then we have this differential equation, no initial condition of the initial voltage is equal to zero, and then we get this forced response. So if we add the natural response and the forced response, then we have the final response of our circuit. In the case of discrete systems, we have the same situation. This is the solution that we have calculated for our difference equation. So we have a natural response 
that depends only on the initial condition and we have the forced response which depends only on the excitation and also in the case of the difference equation we can express the difference equation as a natural response as shown here that depends only on the output voltage on the voltage across the capacitor and the force response that depends only on the excitation and as we will see in future videos this is very useful to obtain the dynamic response of a discrete system by superposition well this concludes this presentation today i hope that you find this information useful Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thanks for watching and goodbye now.